Hello everyone, Blink here. Today I want to discuss a highly controversial topic within the league community, to which a lot of players attribute their failure and in some cases their success. So the question is, do genetics matter in League of Legends? The short answer is most likely not that much. Genetics is not the key factor that will determine how much you can improve. Raw reaction time, like a lot of people claim to be purely genetics, can also be improved. In the book Peak, Secrets from the New Science of Expertise, Anders Ericsson has studied how top performing athletes, musicians, mathematicians, chess players, learn and get to the top of their own expertise. His findings were groundbreaking. What a lot of people called innate talent was completely dismantled. He found that people like Mozart weren't just born with innate abilities that allowed them to get to the top of their own expertise without any effort, but rather that their key of success was the following. 1. They started practicing at a really early age, which wired their brain differently from most people. 2. They've accumulated a lot more deliberate practice hours than the rest. Something I want to make clear here is that they've analyzed deliberate practice hours, not just practice hours. Meaning hours where the players practice purposely, with a goal in mind every session and clear feedback. I will make a whole different video regarding deliberate practice. 3. Top performers have better mental representations than the average. Mental representations allow us to plan and visualize a process, which will help us in performing it. They also allow us to foresee and expect any problems or surprises and plan responses to them. It's important to note that you cannot create mental representations by just studying a topic. You will need to act. Try something or create something. Get feedback on your attempt and retrying over and over again to get better outcomes and learning the various ways in which one can fail. In effect, practicing is the way to develop mental representations, and mental representations are what is needed for expert performance in any field. For League, most people think that IQ is what dictates your overall performance, but that is just not the case. As with any complex expertise, IQ is just a piece of the puzzle, and even one that doesn't matter that much. With this, I'm not trying to say that IQ and some innate genetics don't have its place. A person with higher IQ does learn faster than a person with lower IQ, but only in the beginning, when both are learning the skill from zero. But in the long run, there is no correlation between high IQ and performance. In fact, a lot of chess grandmasters don't have that really high IQ compared to normal adult IQ of similar level of education nor there is any correlation between the IQs of highly skilled chess players and their chess ratings. The study done regarding how children learn chess shows that a child with higher IQ will learn the game faster than another with lower IQ, but when everyone has learned the game, they analyzed the top performers of each class and found no IQ correlation. There were people with high IQ as well as people with low IQ in this group of top performers. In fact, they found that the average IQ was lower in the top performers group compared to the starting point. They speculated that this is due to a difference in the practice hours. Let me explain. A person with lower IQ will need more time to understand the game and learn it from the beginning. This makes that the person with lower IQ has to study the game more to be able to catch up with their higher IQ peers, which need less time. This creates the habit of putting in more practice hours and in the long run, accumulated practice hours is what made the lower IQ chess players surpass their higher IQ peers. A documented example will be the Polgar sisters. In the 1960s, the Hungarian psychologist Laszlo Polgar and his wife Clara embarked in an experiment to prove that any child can become a genius with the proper teaching. As soon as they could, they homeschooled their children and started their chess training. The experiment was a complete success. Susan, the first daughter, was only 15 years old when she was awarded with the first Grandmaster status via the same path that the males must take. And Susan wouldn't even be the most accomplished of the sisters. Sophia, the second daughter, had also an amazing chess career. 
she achieved a chess rating of 2735 ELO, which at that time was one of the highest tournament ratings ever for either a male or a female player. Their third daughter, Judith, became a grandmaster at only 15 years and 5 months, making her at that time the youngest person, male or female, to ever reach that level. An even stranger is the case of Go, which is often referred as the Korean version of chess. This game is actually considered more complex and challenging than chess, and recent studies of Go masters have found that their average IQ is, if anything, below average. Two separate studies of Korean Go experts found an average IQ of about 93, compared with a control group of non-Go playing Koreans matched for age and sex, which had an average IQ of around 100. What do you guys think? Given the current scientific literature, are you convinced that genetics don't play an important role in League of Legends? Or do you think that they do? Please let me know in the comments your opinion. I'd love to discuss this topic with you guys. If you happen to be new to the channel, consider subscribing if you're interested in this type of content. Drop me a like if you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys on the next one.